Good morning, YouTube. It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It's 62 degrees at 7 a.m. It's going to be a pleasant day today. Not too hot. Not too cold. Even if it's raining, cloudy where you are, praise him. Every day above ground is another opportunity, right? Every day above ground is a great day. Today, we're going to be talking about divine promises, and that comes out of Numbers 23 and 19. Morning version of Numbers is from the N-A-S as in Sam, B as in boy version, biblical version. Evening version of Numbers 23 and 19 is uh, coming out of the King James Biblical Version. Numbers 23 reads, God is not a man that he should lie. Oh, I, this sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> I've said it a couple of two, three times, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. God is not man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? When Adam and Eve were caught in their sin, they were ashamed. And instead of repenting, they tried to protect themselves by placing the blame somewhere else. It was the woman's fault, wasn't it? it or was it the snake's fault? God punished all of them. The truth is that they were each responsible for their own decisions. Not really sure what that has to do with the divine promises of God, but okay. Hmm? Adam and Eve and the snake <laughs> uh, uh, lied, sinned, lied and sinned and sinned and lied. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get that. The next part of the text says, God is fully divine. He cannot lie. Amen. What God has spoken is truth. So we can trust his promises will endure. Do you sometimes doubt God's presence or help or goodness in your life? Take time to read his word today and believe that these are the words of truth and that they will prevail. And then our prayer for this morning is, Father God, I don't want to doubt your promises anymore. Thank you that you speak words of truth into my heart. Help me to discern what is from you and what is not. Okay. Evening version of Numbers 2319 comes out of New King James and it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Question mark. Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Question mark. The text says lies have been around ever since the Garden of Eden. Okay. We don't respond much differently than Adam and Eve when we try to hide our wrongdoing. We are quick to create excuses for ourselves. Nobody likes to feel ashamed. Unfortunately, because we know that we stray from the truth at times, we are often uncertain of the truth in others. This is a this is human nature, but it is not God's nature. God don't lie. I'm assuming this is why we're tying in Adam and Eve. What happened in the Garden of Eden? To 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 compare it to God to show us how opposite as a human when it comes to lying or, or being human 
how opposite we are to God. Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't know. It, it says, the last part of it says, let truth flood your soul tonight as you meditate in God's word. And then our prayer for the evening is, God, I am glad that you are the unyielding truth. Amen. I pray that I would always check myself against your nature and your word. Amen. I want to reflect your truth in all that I say and do. Amen. And then our question for ourselves uh, for the day is, what truths can you declare right now? So, I have to say, just to be open and honest and transparent, I, I, I get it. I get it. We are to be as Christ-like as possible at all times. I definitely, definitely get that. We need to be honest. Okay? We need to be truthful. Right? I do believe that... Because we are human, we go on into perfection and we all fall short. I think to compare ourselves in this way is flawed because it is inevitable. It is inevitable that we, that we fall short. It is not inevitable that God falls short. It is not inevitable that he will lie, okay? He is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent, right? I think we get in trouble when we hold ourselves in this place where we want to be as godly as possible and all of the human in us which we discipline our flesh, yes, daily, but it's there. It's there. It's there. It's in your DNA. Not, not that you should just go out there and willy-nilly, but I do believe that sometimes we're so busy trying to look holy, and, and down inside it's still so flawed and fractured and broken. So that's why I don't really particularly care for the comparison. God is my guide. He 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 is my measuring stick. He's my 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 bar of standard. I don't go beneath it. I don't drop below it. And everything above that is me pushing and 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 struggling and disciplining myself to do better. To do better. To do better. To be better. To be more Christ-like. Okay? But to push myself to be exactly who God is, is really nonsense. <laughs> I'm glad there's only one. I'm glad. <laughs> Moreover, I'm thrown off by this, by this, um, this topic, the way that it's being supported. Not through Numbers 23. I think that's great support for the topic of divine promises. I think the text is flawed. And, you know, maybe I'm being too suchy-muchy. Okay? Maybe they had to condense it. It's over 7,000 promises of God. Okay? That's just the counted. <laughs> But I, I think we could have benefited from hearing some of the promises of God. And so I am going to take this opportunity since we've read both of our texts and both of our prayers. And we've asked ourselves the question, what truths of God can you declare right now? I thought we could just name a few of the promises of God and I pray that this my prayer for you today that hearing these will edify you hearing these will strengthen you 
Hearing these will give you the confidence, not just to make it through this day, but through this week, through this month, through this year, through this quarter, semester, trimester. Come on, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Huh? Yes. Okay. These are just a few. God sees and is aware of everything you go through. God cares about everything you go through. God grieves when you hurt. God loves you unconditionally. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Oh, I love that promise. Yes. God will turn all of your ashes into beauty. That's Isaiah 61. Huh? He'll give you beauty for the ashes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my my may i tell you when i love the lord i love the lord he heard my cry and pitied the I'm just all off there, but you get my point. Yeah, you get my point, huh? You definitely get my point. That was just a few promises. If you go out there and put promises of God in, you will see different lists. You'll see a list of 150, a 7, a 10, a, a 9, a, a 3 of the most awesome promises of God. Oh, they're out there. They're out there. Okay, you can find some concise lists. Okay, you can even go out there and find all the scriptures that tie in, just the scriptures that tie in with the promises of God. Okay, there are many. God will forgive you. God will come near to you. Okay, these are all promises. God gives good gifts. God will never forget you. You have a hope and a future. God will teach and guide you. God will finish the work that he has begun in you. Your name is written in heaven. You are under grace. Come on now, we're talking about divine promises. God cares for you. God will make you strong and firm. Nothing can separate you from God's love. These are promises. Perfect love drives out fear. God is able to keep you from falling. God's peace will guard you. God gives good gifts. You are set free. That's John 8, 36. God will come near to you. God will forgive you. You have an abundant, you will have an abundant life. That's John 10. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There are many divine promises. Many, many divine promises. And, and, and it is my prayer for you today that you will just create your own small list that speaks to every situation that you have going on right now. Every bit of doubt, every seat of doubt that's in your heart, in your spirit, get you, get you scripture and promise to go with it. Promise and the scripture to go with it. Okay, and keep you a small list of your own to edify yourself, to build yourself up, to build confidence in yourself, right? And your walk with Christ, to build your relationship with him, to enhance your worship. Oh, yes. That's all I got to say to y'all today. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I, You know, we. this is the first time we've had... A devotional that we or I personally 
how I should say, um, have had issue with, you know, have had, had a bit of challenge with. Um, I've had some small concerns, but this is the first time I've had um, text that to me does not, does not even touch what, what our scripture is. It definitely doesn't speak to what our topic is. These the this notion of of promising and divine promises and and then the fortification of it through Numbers twenty three and nineteen, which is God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. It fortifies the promises, right? It does. But this text doesn't support it. The text doesn't support it, in my opinion. So I, I pray that you'll go in your Google search and you put in the promises of God. It's so many you can't even you can't create a concise list that you can keep, you know, in your pocket with the with the the font big enough that you can see. It's that many. But you can go in and pull out those promises that speak directly to you speak directly to your situation that speak directly uh to your family over your children there's promises he's made out there for your children and your children's children okay we go and we get these promises and we lock them deep in our hearts right and so when that doubt comes in we feed that doubt the promises of god come on come on Come on now. Huh? When that fear comes in, we shove the promises of God down that fear's throat. We strangle it out. We snatch it up by the root through the promises of God. Oh, yes. That's all I got to say to y'all today. That's my prayer for you. Okay. I love you with the love of the Lord. Really, there's nothing you can do about that. And that makes me happy. It makes me happy. Huh? That you can't change. God's love for you, you can't change it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hmm? And I'm, I'm bound. I'm bound. I'm obligated. I'm mandated to love you with the love of the Lord. Which means it don't matter how Miss Honey feels about you. Huh? She got to treat you with love. Huh? That's why it should make you happy. All right, you guys. I done started to meddle around, pick around at my vanity here. Let me get on off of here. I love y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day. And until next time, honeybees, mwah, I'll holler.